Morocco is the only African country that is not currently a member of the African Union. I repeat, Morocco is the only African country that is not currently a member of the African Union. However, it is a member of the Arab League at present, Arab, Arab Maghreb Union, the Francophony Organization of the Islamic Conference, Mediterranean Dialogue Group, and Group of 77, and is a major non-NATO ally of the United Snakes. It shows you that they have no brotherhood with the Africans of the motherland. If Islam only comes into Africa at the beginning of the 7th century AD, how can this be our original religion? If Islam only comes into North Africa at the beginning of the 7th century AD, how can this be our original religion? It is nothing but a damn lie. There is no Islam before Muhammad ibn Abdullah of Arabia during the 6th century AD. And if you look on the map, it shows you that the land that we know of as Morocco today, not in the ancient time, because there was no Morocco until Islam comes into Africa, but Islam does not reach those lands until the 8th through 12th century AD. Before that, it had been ruled by the Nile Valley Africans. It had been ruled by the Carthaginians, Carthaginians, Hannibal and his father, but at no time in the ancient world were there any Moors in that land ruling anything. Again, there are no Moors until the coming of Islam. Let's go to the Quran questions for Moorish Americans. If you look at the top to the right, you can see the two hands that are clutching. This is nothing more than a Masonic handshake. So not only have they intertwined the low life did Arab religion, they have also intertwined the white cracker Masonic Lodge into this nonsense. It is nothing more than nonsense. Now let's go to question 87. I'm going to go straight to it. I'm going to go straight to the heart of it. What is it meant by the word black? Black, according to science, means death. This is exactly what is taught in this questions for Moorish Americans. It is taught that black means death. Let me go on. Question 89. What does Ethiopia mean? Ethiopia means something divided. 93. Will you define the word white? White means purity. Purity means God. And God means the ruler of the land. If this ain't white supremacy, cracker, a rab ass religion, I don't know what the hell it is. How the hell you gonna say that black means death? And, and then you come right behind that and, and say white means purity, purity means God, and God means the ruler of the land. Should a racist low down cracker from down south couldn't have taught that shit no better? What the hell is they gonna come and bring this to us? This nigga Noble, I drew, Noble Drew Ali wasn't nothing but an Arab flunky. And I said it. You know, here you gonna come in here and disrespect black and say, according to science, means death. And then when you break down science itself, chemistry, chem, black, the, the black art, alchemy, chem, alchemy, the black sciences. How in the hell you gonna say that according to science, black means death? When science itself means the black art. So you can see that this brother ain't got no real science. What does Ethiopia mean? Ethiopia means something divided. It do not. Ethiopia means burnt face. Ethiopia. Op, opt. Like optical. It means face. Burnt face. It has nothing to do with something that is divided. So you can, uh, as soon as you go into this, this book. You can see that it is something that has been designed by that white Arab given to Noble Drew Ali, and then he come over here and give it to you and tell you it's your original relig religion. This nigga leading you back into the arms of the Arab. Let's go to number 60. Who was God in the holy city of Mecca today to keep the unbelievers away? Angels. What is the modern name for those angels? Asiatics. What is the color of their skin? Olive. Olive. So I mean, this he has no respect 
for the color black. But he can tell you about white. And he can tell you that the angels who are Asiatics, their skin is olive. If this ain't a white man's religion, white Arab religion, I don't know what the hell it is. Let's go to number 52. At what place on earth was the physical part of man formed? In the Garden of Eden. Where is that Garden of Eden? In the land of Canaan, in the city of Mecca. What is the modern name for the Garden of Eden? Mecca. Now, it, as you see how the Moors try to intertwine Kemet and the Nile Valley into the Moor science. If they truly understood the Nile Valley, they know damn well ain't nowhere on the ancient papyruses and the walls of the Nile Valley where they wrote that the Garden of Eden was in no damn Mecca or in no damn land of Canaan. They spoke that they came from the beginnings of the Nile around the Great Lakes region of Central East Africa, which, which they call Ta Netheru, or the Kui land, the land of the gods, where they began. Ain't nowhere in the ancient scriptures of the Nile Valley where they taught that they came up out of some damn Canaan and that their Garden of Eden was no damn Mecca because there was no Mecca. There was no Mecca. There was no Islam before Mohammed Ibn Abdullah. These niggas have hijacked our ancient history, intertwined it with the religions of our oppressors, of our low-down Arab slave masters. And then you want to come in here and get this nigga all this credit. Why would he teach that uh, bl black means death? Because the error in his writings in his uh, 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 paintings, always painted the devil as black, as you see right here. He always painted the devil as black. And whether, uh, uh, it, I don't know if it's a documented fact that Noble I drew, drew Ali went to Egypt, but if he did went to Egypt, at that time and during the time in which he lived, it was ruled by the Ottoman Turks. And those low life did no good. Uh, Arab ass uh, Turks were some of the most vicious and most brutal genocidal maniacs on our people that has ever been recorded. Muhammad Ali, they say he, he caused so much genocide and so much mass murder in North Africa that the blood was up to his knees. They had to beg them not to kill all the Africans on the damn continent. This is how brutal the Turks were into our people. But before I even leave this, let me go to this again. This is writings about the noble Jew Ali. In, in 1913, noble Jew Ali warned, the cardinal customs of man do not alter the nature of truth. Legally and divinely, the definition of the word black has never been changed. According to science, he added, black means death. This nigga has been brainwashed. I don't give a damn what nobody say. He's preaching a white Arab religion. He got his knowledge from a white Turkish Arab when he went to Egypt and he then brought it back to you to, to uh, suck you off into mental, spiritual, and physical oppression. The reason why you continue to hear me use uh, bring up the references of the Turks is because in chapter 45 of the divine origin of the Asiatic nations, number seven, Noble Jew Ali teaches us the Turks are the true descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic creed of Mecca, beginning from Muhammad the first, the founding of the uniting of Islam by the command of the great universal God Allah. So Noble Jew Ali admits that it started with Muhammad the first. And he also gives reference to the Turks as the true descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic creed of Mecca. Our genocidal oppressive maniac Turk Arab oppressor this man says is the chief protector of the Islamic creed of Mecca. If this ain't nothing but some white supremacist, Arab, oriented, oppressive of a religion, I don't know what the hell it is. Go straight to the more science 
false teachings part two for an even hotter video than the first. Don't you miss it. Hotel. If black means death, does that apply to the sacred black stone of the Kaaba? If black means death, does that also apply to the black stone of the Kaaba? Now he knows damn well if, if Noble Drew Ali would go into Mecca and say that the El Rukin, the black stone of the Kaaba, means death, then he would lose his head. He knows that. But see, they plan both sides of the fence. They'll tell you black means death, but when you go to Mecca, the most sacred relic in all of Islam, the El Rukin, is a black stone. Let's go into the Turks, into Egypt. I have to get on these Turks because he says that they are the chief protectors of Islam. You see them here with Howard Carter. You know Howard Carter, he's the low life -de cracker that broke into the tomb of Tutankhamun and raped the tomb of all of its treasure. Who allowed him in? The Turks. The low life -de Turks. And you see them right here uh, uh, together plotting on going down in the sacred tomb. You, hear, you see them right here with the fezes on outside of the tomb after they done went down there raping and robbing. So you got to be clear about this. What I'm putting before you is the actual facts to show you what these low down Turk, Arab, European cracker have plotted to go into our sacred lands to rape and rob the treasures and you got to see it for what it is. You got to see it for what it is, African people. You got to call it for what it is. You can't uh, straddle the fence. You got to recognize who your enemy is. You got to do that. And if you see any nigga talking about he's a moor and he's wearing a fez, you got to put him on the spot. Nigga, what you got that, the, uh, the hat of our oppressor on your head for? You got to ask him that. And we ain't, and there is no doubt that they are the hats of our oppressor. You see Howard Carter here again with a low life Arab Turk plotting on going down in the tomb, knowing it's not his ancestor. This is why they sold it away. If you look at a lot of the artifacts in a lot of these museums all over the world, under the Turks is how them Arabs came in, I mean how those, well the Arab and the European, how they came into Africa and got away with so much of our artifacts, they did it up under the Turks. They did it up under the Turks. The same low life did Arab Turk that Noble Drew Ali says is the chief protectors of Islam. To allow these no good low life did beasts to come in and desecrate our ancestors' tombs. And you walking around with the fairs on. Like that means something to me. Nigga, that's the hat of my oppressor. That's the hat of the one that then degraded my people and committed genocide on my people. Saladin the Wretched. Saladin the Wretched. One of the most vile Turks that ever walked on the planet. Let's read Village Life in Egypt with sketches of the Said by Bell St. John. The destruction was the work of Kara Kush, a Greek Enuk, one of the emirs of the that prince's army, and a man of considerable genius. He was a superintendent of the buildings of the capital, and it was he who raised the wall which encircles Fustat Cairo and the land that separates those two cities, as well as the citadel built on Mount Murakam and the wells that are seen still seen there. He used the stones that came from the small pyramids in the construction of the arches of Giza. He used the stones that came from the small pyramids in constructing the arches of Giza, a work worthy of the highest admiration and comparable with those of the giants. The remains of the pyramids destroyed by Karush are still to be seen. Now here it is. They attacking the pyramids to build the mosque of Cairo. 
they destroyed, they pulled the limestone off the sides of the pyramids and they even destroyed the smaller pyramids, which were the pyramids of the queen. Gentleman's Magazine, January 1842. The danger to which Egyptian rel relics of the first order are exposed, the destruction which they have already encountered, does indeed appeal to the Aquarians uh, of Europe, to the scientific of all nations, to check and arrest by every means in their power the lapellations and destruction so barbarous and so mischievous in their results. The reputation of Muhammad Ali, the Turk, as a renovator of Egypt must receive considerable tarnish in the present day and indelible stain in all future time for the reckless habit which he has permitted to be made of her vulnerable, venerable monuments. That's Muhammad Ali. The man, if you look at the obelisk in, in Paris, it was Muhammad Ali that tore that because it was originally in front of the Grand Lodge of Luxor. He tore it down and gave it to the, to the French. He tore it down. That lets you know it wasn't a part of their culture. But again, this is the Turk. This is the man that Noble Jew Ali says is the chief protector of Islam. He sure ain't the chief protector of Africa and African people and African culture. You got to make that clear. Village life in Egypt with sketches of the Said by Bell St. John. Nothing gives a grander idea of the architectural achievements of the ancient Egyptians than the labor for thousands of years has been from time to time expended in pulling down what they built up. Formerly as an air rider of authority, there existed at Giza a considerable number of small pyramids which were destroyed in the time of Saladin. Actual fact. So you got to know this. You got to call them on it. They are nothing but the enemy. The fairs, anytime you see the fairs, it is the hat, the cap of our enemy, low down Turk Arab. Call them niggas on it. Some of these moors even say that the Pharaoh is wearing a fairs. I'm going to let you look at this for yourself. You going to let them niggas usurp your knowledge and your history. And give it over to a Turk Arab fans wearing ass nigga to usurp your knowledge like that? I'll let you look at it for yourself. According to the ancient Egyptians, and specifically the Book of the Dead, the original wearer of the crowns of Egypt was Osiris, who was not a Moor nor a Muslim. Glory be to thee, O Osiris Unefa, thou great God in Aptu, Abydos. King of eternity, Lord of everlastingness, God whose existence is millions of years, eldest son of Newt, not Allah, begotten by Geb, not Allah, the chief ancestor, Lord of the crowns of the south and north, Lord of the high white crown. And the white crown is the crown of Upper Egypt, showing that the, upper, the, the crown of Upper Egypt was the supreme crown, and it was the crown that came from the origin of Nubia and the regions where the Great Lakes region of Central East Africa began. So that, dis that eliminates this uh, land of Canaan origin for our Nile Valley Africans. I want to bring you to this, this very terrible incident that happened in 2006 where some Die four refugees fled into Egypt, and the Egyptians, you know, allowed them to stay there for uh, for maybe two or three months, and then they moved in on our brothers and sisters. Just these are the the Turks of today, moved in on our brothers and sisters, and attacked them and destroyed the the mini camp where they had set up. The Egyptians said they was gonna give them. A refuge but in the end they came in and destroyed the camp and carried the native Nubian Africans who are the original peoples of that land and drug them out like they was nothing but animals 
put water hoses all on them. Some are even down on their knees praying to Allah. You think that low life that cracker give a damn? He just uh, uh, attacked them like he was nothing but savages. The women are carried out. The women are carried out, then collapse, and he, the man is trying to explain that he can't go back because they're going to kill him. Do you think they give a damn? This is the Turk Arab of today. Peace. All right, let's deal with the fact that the Circle 7 Quran is a plagiarized version of the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ by Levi. Let's deal with that fact. This book, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, was copyrighted in 1907. You understand what I'm saying? The Moore Science Temple wasn't established until 1913. So this book was written six years before the Moore Science Temple was even established. Let's deal with the fact that the Circle 7 Quran, the first 19 chapters are taken from this book, the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, chapters 20 through 44, were taken from the text known as Unto the I Grant, was, which was written in 1754. Now let's go into uh, chapter 11. The title of that chapter, Jesus and Barata, together they read the sacred books. You go into chapter 32 of the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus and Barata, together, they read the sacred books. Jesus takes exception to the Buddhist doctrine of evolution and reveals the true origin of man. Plagiarism. Nothing but plagiarism. Now let's go to chapter 18. The resurrection of Jesus Pilate places the Roman seal upon the store, stone door of the tomb. At midnight, a company of the silent brothers march about the tomb. The soldiers are alarmed. Jesus preaches to the spirits in prison. Early Sunday morning, he rises from the tomb. The soldiers are bribed by the priest to say that, this, that the disciples had stolen the body. This is from the uh, Circle 7 Quran. Now let's go into the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, chapter 172. Pilate places the Roman seal upon the stone door of the tomb. At midnight, a company of the silent brothers march about the tomb. The soldiers are alarmed. Jesus preaches to the spirits in prison. Early morning, he arises from the tomb. The soldiers are bribed by the priest to say that the disciples had stolen the body. Guilty. Guilty of plagiarism. You busted. Anybody out there that is listening to this video, if you get a Circle 7 Quran and get an Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, you can do this research. You can do this research. Let's go to uh, chapter 4. Death and Burial of Elizabeth. Manito's Lesson. The Ministry of Death. Let's go into the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I cut this, uh, the top of this chapter is cut off. But if you get the book, you can go in and verify exactly what chapter it is. Death and Burial of Elizabeth, Manitho's Lessons, The Ministry of Death, The Mission of John, Institution of the Rite of Baptism. Manitho takes John to Egypt and places him in the temple at Saqqara, where he remains 18 years. You see, he cut that off. See, he cuts that off. He don't teach how all of this describes John the Baptist, Jesus, Abraham, according to the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ, all of them got their knowledge in Egypt. You understand what I'm saying? He's, he's plagiarizing He's cutting off portions of the title, giving you bits and pieces, but he is plagiarizing. Ain't no damn doubt about that. I gave you the references, and anybody out there can go behind me and do that research. Now, let's go into chapter 17. Jesus appears, 
fully materialized before Apollo and the Silent Brotherhood in Greece appear, appears to Claudia and, Ju and Juliet on the Tiber near Rome appears to the priests in the Egyptian temples at Heliopolis. Go into chapter 178 of the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus appears fully materialized before Apollo and the Silent Brotherhood in Greece appears to Claudius and Juliet on the Tiber near Rome appears to the priests in the Egyptian temple at Heliopolis. Guilty. Plagiarism. Do the research. See what they what lie they come up with then. They talking about all that he a noble Jew Ali brought. He plagiarized. Anytime you take from another script, another writing, and you do not give a, a reference to the author of the original writing, that is plagiarism. Guilty. Now let's go uh, to chapter 16. Pilate's final effort to release Jesus fails. He washes his hands in fiend innocent, delivers Jesus to the Jews for execution. The Jewish soldiers drive him to Calvary. Now let's go into the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Chapter 168, Pilate's final effort to release Jesus fails. He washes his hands in fiend innocent. Delivers Jesus to the Jews for execution. The Jewish soldiers drive him to Calvary. Guilty of plagiarism. You're guilty. Now let's go into chapter 55. Things that he left out. Jesus passes the seventh brotherhood test. And in the purple room of the temple receives the seventh, the highest degree, the Christ. He leaves the temple a conqueror. This is in Egypt. This is in Egypt. This is where he receives his seventh, the highest degree of Christ. He receives it in Egypt. Why is this not taught? Let's go into chapter 54 that gives the clear reference of what I'm talking about. Jesus becomes a private pupil of the Hierophant and is taught the mysteries of Egypt. In passing the seventh test, he works in the chamber of the dead. In Egypt, not Canaan, not Mecca, not Morocco, not America, Egypt is where he receives his degree of Christ. Why the hell that ain't brought out? Plagiarism. He cut what he wanted to put in the book to make up the mystery or, or the fantasy that he wanted to project and he clearly cut out other information that would have given the people a clear understanding of what this was all about. Upon your brow, I place this diadem in the great lodge of the heavens and earth. You are the Christ. In Egypt, not in Mecca, not in Canaan, not in uh, Morocco, not in America. This takes place in Egypt. Oh, let's deal with this also in the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. You ask why Abram came into Egypt land. This is the cradle land of the initiate. All secret things belong to Egypt land. This is why the master.